April 23, 2002 saw the official release of Yankee Hotel Foxtrot by legendary Illinois-based rock band Wilco. Their fourth record, and the one that made them indie rock legends, was Staying Power. The creation of Yankee Hotel Foxtrot was tumultuous. From health problems, drugs, conflict within the band, and label issues, there is no shortage of lore behind this record. It's been over 20 years since the album was released, and a lot has changed in indie rock sense, but this record has remained a staple of its era. Frontman Jeff Tweedy has become viewed as one of the most prolific musicians from his generation. So how does Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, the band's true breakthrough album, hold up all these years later? Continue watching to find out. But before we get to the songs, let's go over the band's humble beginnings, the events leading up to the album, and the issues that plagued its creation and release. Wilco began following the end of Uncle Tupelo in 1994. The band has been described pretty accurately as alt-country. To put it simply, Uncle Tupelo broke up due to growing tension between frontman Jay Farrar and Jeff Tweedy. This falling out directly led to the lineup of Uncle Tupelo, aside from Farrar, forming Wilco. Bassist John Starrett, drummer Ken Coomer, and multi-instrumentalist Max Johnson would all contribute to Wilco's first record. Max Johnson wouldn't stay for long, but Ken Coomer remained with the band until 2001, and John Starrett has been with Wilco since the beginning. In terms of sound, Wilco continued on the trajectory of Uncle Tupelo, feeling very much roots rock tinged, largely country inspired with a lot of twang, but rock and roll remained the heart and soul. In 1995, after getting signed by Reprise Records, Wilco released their debut album entitled AM. A very interesting release that remains in the same vein as Uncle Tupelo, yet also retains its own individuality. Tweedy's vocals are raspy with punk flair, perfectly in unison with these tracks that balance rock and country well. The album flows nicely, consistently a beat, and it's not confined by one style, all over the place in terms of influences. As a result, AM feels unique, but you can tell Jeff Tweedy had yet to reach his full potential as a songwriter. Ultimately, this is the band's first album, and they would only continue to grow creatively from here, but for the world's first taste of Wilco, it's a solid starting point for a group that would go on to change the face of indie rock. Following AM, Wilco would undergo some lineup changes, which would prove to be very significant in the band's history. The band would bring Bob Egan on board, who would only remain with Wilco for a short period. This is also where multi-instrumentalist Jay Bennett came into the picture, whose contributions to the band could not be ignored. Jay was a big part of the creative process for two of the band's arguably most beloved records. We'll get there soon enough. In October 1996, Wilco released their sophomore record, Being There. This record masterfully expands upon the debut, feeling infinitely more thought out and deliberate. AM felt like a collection of songs, whereas Being There is more of an album experience. Sound-wise, Wilco furthers their roots rock flair, but enters new territory exploring more synthy textures. The production is cleaner, and Jeff Tweedy's writing has noticeably improved. Being There offers a lot more diversity than its predecessor, as the band was undergoing a shift in sound that would come to define later releases. This is a double album, so it's a pretty lengthy listen, with nearly 20 tracks altogether. But overall, an ambitious follow-up to the debut, seeing Wilco grow and come into their own. A massive step forward, consistently moving from start to finish. This was a stressful period for Jeff Tweedy, trying to make the band more monetarily feasible. He had bills to pay and a newly born son, Spencer, so Wilco needed to work out. Music is the only thing Jeff really knew. Following being there, pedal steel guitarist Bob Egan would be canned. He was replaced by Leroy Bach. In 1998, Wilco took a brief detour and collaborated with singer-songwriter Billy Bragg on a record entitled Mermaid Avenue. This record spawned one of the band's most known tracks, California Stars. A second part to this record would come in 2000. In between these two collaborative projects, Wilco would find the time to write, record, and release their third full-length album, Summer Teeth. 1999's Summer Teeth saw Wilco take their sound even further with sharp writing and lush orchestral elements. Easily the band's most enthralling release up to this point, being an hour of the classic Wilco we've all come to love. This album is full of thoughtful lyrics, infectious melodies, and contains an earnest nature that made the band so captivating. Jay Bennett's contributions here are undoubtedly a massive factor in its expansive sound. His incorporation of piano, synths, among many other instruments, breathes so much life into Summer Teeth. Along with Jeff Tweedy, the two have incredible chemistry. 
While Jay shines bright on this record, John is hypnotic on the bass, and Ken Coomer kills it on drums. Jeff also writes with more tact and nuance here, solidifying himself as a creative force to be reckoned with. Summer Teeth was Wilco truly firing on all cylinders, a landmark indie rock album. As we entered the new millennium, we entered the Yankee Hotel Foxtrot era of Wilco, an era that as turbulent as it was, will forever be in the music history books. Recording for the album began in late 2000 at The Loft, the band's now famous studio in Chicago. Initial mixing was done at CRC Studios, while the final mixes were completed at Soma Studios. Going into Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, the pressure was already sky high. This needed to be the record that brought the band to the next level. From label expectations to Jeff Tweedy's self-imposed misery of perfectionism, this record determined whether Wilco would sink or swim. If you watch the 2002 documentary, I'm Trying to Break Your Heart, you get a lot of insight into how the band was operating at the time. Let's go over the main issues that plagued the creation and release of Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. First and foremost, the growing tension between Jeff Tweedy and Jay Bennett. The two were creatively clashing and not getting along very well. You can tell by watching the documentary, this working relationship was being held together by a thread. The biggest disagreement between the two came down to the mixing of the album. Jay had been working on his own mixes that weren't jiving with Jeff or the band, so Jeff brought multi-instrumentalist Jim O'Rourke on board. Jim was initially asked to only mix the track I'm Trying to Break Your Heart to test the waters, but ultimately his work blew the band away, and he was then given the task to mix the entire album at Soma Studios. This made Jay feel as though he was being replaced, which was valid as he was. He would be asked to leave after the completion of the album in the summer of 2001. Also, early in the recording sessions, original drummer Ken Coomer would be canned and replaced by Glenn Kochi. So the Yankee Hotel Foxtrot era would see the dismissal of two key members of Wilco. Next up, Jeff Tweedy's addiction to prescription painkillers and chronic migraines. Both Jeff and Jay had issues with drugs, so that very well may have contributed to their explosive relationship. Unfortunately, Jay would die in 2009 from an overdose. More specifically, he died from a faulty fentanyl patch. Jeff eventually got clean after a mental breakdown, following the completion of 2004's A Ghost Is Born. As far as Jeff's migraines, there's a scene in I Am Trying to Break Your Heart in which he's incredibly on edge and throws up shortly after. He then talks of how he's had migraines since his youth, which have always resulted in physical sickness. Needless to say, the man was going through quite a bit, dealing with his own personal issues, as well as the pressures that come with being a frontman. Finally, the biggest issue Wilco faced was the lack of support from their label and ultimately getting dropped. When the band turned in Yankee Hotel Foxtrot to Reprise Records, the label demanded changes. Reprise had no faith in the album whatsoever, as there were no hit singles to be found. $85,000 was given to the band by the label to record independently at their leisure, and there was genuine worry that money wouldn't be made back. In hindsight, the record would be hugely successful critically and commercially, but at the time, there was no way of predicting that. In the end, after some negotiations, Wilco exited Reprise. They got out of their contract with relative ease, and were free to do whatever they wanted with the record. This is now July 2001, and the band was now without a label. They continued on as best as they could, playing shows and trying to keep a positive attitude. By September 2001, the band made the decision to release the album on their website after leaks were starting to circulate. This would end up panning out well for Wilco, as word of mouth got around, and fans eagerly hopped on their computers to listen. The record would be received well across the board, and the band would get many label offers. Ultimately, Jeff opted to sign with none such records, and Yankee Hotel Foxtrot saw an official release on April 23, 2002. The issues surrounding the record's release were now a thing of the past, and Wilco Against All Odds came out on the other side stronger than ever. Wilco stuck to their guns, declining to change the album and submit to industry pressure. A tale of true resiliency. The music should always come first, and it's great to see a band refuse to sacrifice their artistic vision. Whether you like Jeff Tweedy as a person or not, he stood his ground and things worked out astronomically well for him and his band. Now with the essential context for the album out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes, the music itself. 
Yankee Hotel Foxtrot opens with I Am Trying to Break Your Heart, which is a weighty artistic statement right off the bat. The opener sees Wilco delving into experimental territory on the border of avant-garde before finding its groove. The track transitions into an indie rock powerhouse. By the end, the track circles back to experimental abrasion and enters the void. Tweedy sings of disillusion, with his lyrics alluding to the ending of a relationship and turning to alcohol to numb himself out. Though Jeff has gone on record and stated, there's not a definitive meaning. Mixing this track proved to be quite the task, but the end result would give the song its signature cinematic vibe that makes it such a strong opening moment. Camera continues on, an exceptionally colorful track, poppy as can be, instantly infectious. The synth tones executed by Jay Bennett are pure ear candy, coinciding with Tweedy's abstract lyrics. But really, everybody in Wilco shines here, working together to bring this intricate composition to life. Overall, one of the defining feel-good rock jams of Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. Radio Cure builds an atmosphere beautifully, with every element in unison, creating a sound that is sonically massive. Definitely a track that retreats within itself, introspective to the highest degree. Jeff Tweedy is laying down lines such as, My mind is filled with silvery stars, honey kisses clouds of fluff, that may allude to his chronic migraines, while the constantly repeated line, Distance has no way of making love understandable, cuts very deep as Tweedy's desperate vocals evoke a strong feeling of longing. War on War is pretty upbeat, led by an acoustic guitar, with tinges of synths that really bring this track home. Like Camera, this one is straightforward in delivery, very much the definition of indie rock, but the masterful production and Tweedy's sticky vocal melody help War on War rise above the status quo. Lyrically, there is a radiating feeling of optimism. Jesus Etc. is easily one of the main standouts of the record. Opening with gorgeous strings, Tweedy comes in with one of his most vulnerable vocal performances. The track is laid back, contemplative, and rather melancholic in its delivery. It's simply a down-to-earth moment executed flawlessly, following the conventional songwriting template and striking gold. The lyrics are abstract and poetic, hard to decipher a true meaning from, but still remain impactful. Jesus Etc. is coming from a dark place emotionally, trying to make sense of life and love. Ashes of American Flags is a track with a statement many seem to misinterpret. I don't think there's a black and white meaning here, but in my eyes, one of the main themes presented here is consumerism in America with a mention of Coca-Cola being the face of consumerism here in the States, as well as the concluding lines, and all the fallen leaves, filling up shopping bags, which seems to be a critique of American society and how disposable everything has become. Jeff Tweedy seems to be in the midst of an internal crisis, attempting to make sense of himself, his shortcomings, and the world around him. But musically, it's a slower moment that burns bright, feeling very dissonant and minimal, Ashes of American Flags outro descends into madness, perfectly leading into the next track, Heavy Metal Drummer. Heavy Metal Drummer is a fun song opening with the drum machine, easily the most playful moment of the record. Jeff Tweedy yearns for his adolescence, reminiscing on the good old days. The inspiration for Heavy Metal Drummer came from Jeff's days as a young punk rocker, when he and his friends would make fun of heavy metal bar bands in the 80s. But looking back, he wishes he had been a bit more open-minded. With I'm the Man Who Loves You, we're right back in the thick of Jeff Tweedy's introspection, but it maintains the energy of the previous track. This song rocks out nicely, dirty and unbound. Horns accompany this folky number, which shows a side of Wilco that has been mostly absent on Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. The album doesn't have many moments of pure rock catharsis, so I'm the Man Who Loves You really helps diversify the tracklist. Pot Kettle Black is a great track to listen to while on a road trip on a hot summer day. It contains a laid-back vibe, capturing a brief moment of feeling carefree in the sun before the leaves start to fall. The epitome of Wilco's sound, with elements of the alt-country that the band was initially founded upon, but also a strong rock sensibility with an undeniable melody that contains just the right amount of poppiness. Pot Kettle Black feels like a warm blanket, with every element from the guitar to the string section to Tweedy's smooth voice executed masterfully. An outstanding track and a highlight for me. Poor Places is a low-key track that starts off as a sparse piano ballad before transitioning into a Beatles-esque powerhouse. The track slowly builds momentum and takes you on a surreal journey riddled with depression. The final minute features a shortwave radio snippet of a lady repeating Yankee Hotel Foxtrot feeling incredibly ominous. The anxiety continues to build, leading into the finale, Reservations. 
Yankee Hotel Foxtrot concludes on a somber note with Reservations, an incredibly cathartic 7-minute track in which the entire album was building up to. Reservations starts off as a minimal piano number, while Jeff looks inward and reflects on a troubled relationship. He's essentially saying he doesn't feel for this person, at least anymore. There's a distance between them that can't be denied. As the song continues on, melancholic ambience becomes the only thing you hear, and in the final three minutes, you really feel the distance Tweedy is describing. This track ties up loose ends in a very bittersweet manner, not feeling very joyful at all, yet at the same time, an achingly beautiful final moment that closes out this journey on a high note. The record fades out with power and grace. Yankee Hotel Foxtrot isn't overtly catchy. There's definitely not a hit single here. This album is melodically very subtle, taking its time to have its full effect on you. You might not connect with it at first, but with repeated listens, you will be rewarded. It's 51 minutes of grandiose indie rock with orchestral elements, but at the same time, it feels down to earth and personal, especially considering the era in which the album was released. The wounds from 9-11 were extremely fresh, and the sound of Yankee Hotel Foxtrot fit perfectly into the fabric of a somber America recovering from a tragic event. Wilco by no means reinvents the wheel here, but as we've heard with previous albums like Summer Teeth, the band, especially Jeff Tweedy, masterfully took inspiration from alternative rock, folk, and pop, and packaged it in a very satisfying way. Yet, there's also an experimental element that creates a mystical vibe. In many ways, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot is a summation of Wilco's artistry, coming from a place of pure passion and authenticity, bringing the sound of summer teeth into the new millennium and doubling down on versatility, while taking the basics of songwriting and proceeding to make something special. The album was very much Jeff Tweedy's vision, and he rightfully gets a lot of credit, but every member of the band contributes their own unique touch. Jay Bennett, Leroy Bach, John Starrett, and Glenn Kochi were all major components of Wilco during this time, and that must be mentioned. Without these guys, the album couldn't have been made. Jim O'Rourke's mixing also played a crucial role in the album's unique sound. Yankee Hotel Foxtrot has no right being as strong as it is, given the turmoil the band endured during and after recording, but Jeff Tweedy and the gang pulled it off, releasing one of the finest indie rock albums of all time. Thanks for watching. What's your favorite Wilco track? Leave a comment down below. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. More music-related content coming soon here on the Music Narrative.